Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86. I've had the pleasure of trying out multiple gamepads over the years, and doing this has afforded me the opportunity to find what I like and also a little bit about what I don't like. I also want to note, I'm not entirely sure how to say this brand's name, so if I say something offensive, I 100% assure you I'm just doing my best guess here. This is the Gola Kit in their KK3 Max or King Kong 3 Max. It's my first controller from them, and my first impression is pretty great so far. In the box, it comes with a protective travel case, which is pretty neat. It's not going to work with the paddles that are included. I'll talk about that in a minute, which also can contains a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, the button puller, and outside of that is another plastic case with the Xbox layout buttons. As it comes pre-installed with Switch layout, their primary target seems to be the Switch audience for the Switch Pro controller, but if you're not interested in the Switch Pro layout, then you can swap those buttons pretty easily. There's also some metal paddles included in that, which is what I just talked about that you can affix to the back of the controller. They also include thumb grips for the analog sticks, which is a nice touch if you don't want to worry about damaging your thumb grips. A USB Type A to Type C cable for charging charging or playing wired, and a microfiber cloth. I think just about everything these days comes with a microfiber cloth. Buy a car battery, it has a microfiber cloth, gotta keep it looking nice. And there's also some quick start documentation for how to get to debugging the controller and for programming the built-in features like APG or autopilot gaming. Now based on the pictures you might think as I thought that I was going to get something that was mechanical based. The image appears to show a mechanical switch but that's not what that is at all and what they're trying to show you is that this is a seating mechanism that's using a cross stem switch so that you can put the caps and swap them pretty easily. All it really does though is cover a membrane rubber dome so it is a membrane key and not mechanical like you might think by looking at the picture. In my opinion as long as the switches are housed and they actuate well I'll be a happy camper. Let's pause here and take a listen to all the buttons and switches that we have here. I know that it's important to some people, most people won't care, but if it is important to you, let's do that right now so you can hear what they sound like. The triggers are Hall Effect triggers with a rail lock. When left open, you have a range of sensitivity on depression, and it feels great. But in the locked position, while it's open or closed, one tap solution, it's a bit mushy and a little bit spongy feeling. When it comes to fighting games especially, I want more of an immediate definition and actuation that the locked position here just really doesn't give me. It works, it's just, like I said, spongy feeling. The sticks are also Hall Effect sticks that boast a long life with no drift, which is always a plus in any controller. The D-pad supports both 4-way and 8 way settings. It's easily enabled or disabled by using the d-pad right plus the center command button. That being said, most functions can be adjusted here on the fly on the controller itself without the need for a UI suite, of which surprisingly there isn't any. By using a combination of center command button and multiple other combinations found in the guide, so I definitely hang on to the guide, you can change most things in this controller. The illumination of the controller is both subtle and nice looking. The center command button and the d-pad left changes the brightness or disables the lighting. The paddles take a little bit of getting used to. They aren't bad. They're pretty nice actually. Just a different feel to acclimate to when you're trying to try something new here. Usually they're kind of more of paddle switches that are already embedded in the controller and these are going to be more of a protrusion on the bottom. Affixing and removing them, it's pretty easy to do. The APG button will allow you to record and assign. In the events of recording, a UI suite would have been king to me here. A few quick last minute notes, it pulls at a thousand hertz whether wired or wireless, and that's pretty awesome. And it also features luxury implementations of three different vibration modes if that's something that's important to you. I'm not nuanced enough, but I can tell you that they're there and, it, and it's different. It's HD rumble, maglev haptic, which is allegedly something they've pioneered, and a rotor vibration if this is important to you. You can swap between these three different types of vibrations as well as change the vibration strength. And again, all of that's going to be inside of the little booklet that they send with it. APG can handle a lot of continuous commands. Now, it's not the controller, it's me. I'm just not patient enough to perfect it in a more complex command way. But it's a valuable feature that many people want to know about, and it's definitely worth mentioning. On the top of the controller where the USB-C plugs in is also one of my most appreciated features. A lot of controllers will combo you into an X, Y, or D input mode using some sort of command on the controller itself. But there's a simple toggle button here that clearly indicates what you are swapping to. On the opposite side is the player number indicator. The KK3 lives firmly in two worlds to me. As a pretty solid Switch Pro alternative, 
and for me a strong contender for quality feature control is a PC gaming controller over 2.4 gigahertz. I wish it supported a contact charge like my Fly Digi V3P, but all things considered it gets a thumbs up from me if it's a gamepad you've been looking at. I also would have liked to see a UI suite. I think that that really would have been the icing on the cake. I hope that helps someone. I hope you have a great day and night. Whatever it is, I'll see you in the next video that I do.